All right, so we're setting the grapple saw truck up again. He's got these two outriggers down, putting the third one down. Does it come with those lights on it like that? Yeah, the, uh, when, the light, when the light's on, you know that the power to the crane's on. Okay, gotcha. Plus, just a little plus, a little safety. Gotcha. Cause that, how far out will that one extend right there? It'll come on out a good little ways, won't this it? One, this one just comes out a hair more than it, it, it's out. I'm going to set it down just to push it where I want it. It'll go to about right there. I got you. And on that one, you just barely, you barely set it down. You don't really want to pick up. You don't want to pick up with it. All right, so how do you level this one? Uh, so the best thing, I mean, is what got, you got to try to do is get, get level as far as putting some cribbing out to get you level if you're on a hill or something like that. Sure. But you got a little... Uh, oh, there's little your bubble, bubble right bubble. there. Okay. I didn't know yeah. if, it, like, if you'd held it down and leveled itself, but no, you just I washed wish. the bubble. Yeah, that'd be nice. No. <laughs> um, so if you're on a hill and stuff, that's all the time. It's a little tricky. You got to put you out a little crib and build yeah, it up. Yeah, because you bit. ain't got much tolerance there, do you? No, you want to keep it as level as you can. Because you got to be inside that bubble you know, then, right? It's there. actually, if it's even touching the inside line, you're good. You're good. So yeah. about three degrees or so, yeah. something yeah. like yeah. that, maybe? Like that, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. roll, man. Waiting on you. Waiting on you. Don't so, so it, this, this is this is Michael Thompson. He's from up in Tupelo. Well, not well. Nah, I wouldn't say Tupelo. I'm I mean, from everywhere. <laughs> you're from everywhere because you live over toward Pontotoc, right? I just bought a house in Ecru. I've Ecru. lived in Guntown. I've Guns. lived in Corinth. Lived in Fulton. Lived. In you gotta have South the law. How, you got the law after you, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Hey, you gotta you gotta change my name no, on the law. <laughs> but we got we gotta do a little history stuff because this is pretty cool and uh -huh. and uh and, and Lindsay said we had to do this too. So the, the thing about it is, Michael used to, like last week you were still cutting hair, right? That's right. He, used, he used to cut her hair. That's why she's so beautiful. Look at her. <laughs> that's, right. that's what Michael said. That's why he used to. I'm not saying that you were ugly or anything, but I mean, I, he, I, 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 that's you cut I hair. How the heck do you go from cutting hair to taking trees now with a $600,000 machine? Uh, it's been about a five year process. Um, four or five years before, that my hair business got to such a good point where I had freedom. I had a lot of really good customers uh -huh. that took care of me and they worked with me with my schedule. And uh, I just got to a point in my life where I wanted to give back and, and go and help people. And my church, and uh, there's a guy in my church that had started this ministry years ago and they want to start a rapid response part where they go out and help people after tornadoes. And uh, me and Chris Childs, he was getting <laughs> his haircut and he's like, Hey, we're gonna go on our first trip. I was like, all right, where are we going? We're going to Buffalo, New York to uh, do snow and, and cut some trees. Was well, that eight days of hope? Eight, eight, days, eight of hope. days of hope. We, we used to call it, uh, before it was eight days of hope rapid response, it was hope rains. That was the hope rapid rains. response, yeah. Hey, so a little <laughs> behind the scenes story. I have trained Chris Childs before, know, man. Awesome, so, man. So he's gonna watch this and see yeah. this. But man, I have had a blast so far today, man, dude. It's fun, man. Kick butt, took yeah. names, man. We're finna get these trees down yeah. over here. Yeah. So we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of follow him through this whole process here setting this thing up he's got to put the grapple saw on now so he's been the get our remote on he's fixing the unform to undo the transformer here you, you know you're the big dog when you get to wear that yeah, when you, get a remote you know with two when you, falcons, you're good. that's that's right <laughs> that's right and uh from this thing you uh you shut it down you crank it up right up, you, uh, he he's just being fancy now he's just a kid Playing with a video game. Up, That's man. right. And what? And what's your name? I'm Shannon. Shannon got a bakery right here in Amory. Got whacked. Well, your bakery didn't get tore up, did it? A little bit out back. Yeah, a little bit we out got back. a little bit of damage. So this is her house right here. So what's your baker's name? Brown Eyes Bakery. Brown Eyes yeah. Bakery. Got you. So he's gonna unfold it. This thing's pretty wicked, y'all. It's got the. <laughs> It's got a lot of moving parts on it, man. I'm telling you. You got to keep the red parts out of the trees. You can see on there. I, I caught a I, limb on a magnolia one day. I figured you're gonna blame that on Lindsay. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> I let Lindsay run it one time, and that happened. <laughs> Typically, whoever's not here is who I blame. There you go. Whoever didn't come to work. That's all, all of this stuff. Telescopes. Every bit of it. This six, thing is crazy, six, man. Six in each one. Six in each one. Got 112 foot up and 98 out. So if you didn't hear that, it's got 112 foot straight up and 98 out on it. What's the capacity at 98? What would it carry? Uh, 1,700 pounds. 1,700 pounds at 98 foot yep. out. Yep. I'm not getting under it. I know, man. Because, <laughs> I mean, it don't look like it hold five pounds out there. It don't, <laughs> man. She'll do it, though, man. She's stout. They built it well. The truck weighs so much because of the frame. The frame's like double 
half inch. Thing. Oh yeah. So this truck, the rightest rig right now, what you, you said it weighs about 60,000? It's 57 plus all the stuff. Okay, so roughly, see, you could say 60 then. Yeah. But yeah, this thing comes as a total package. It comes with tons of uh, extra remote. These remotes are like four grand. They send you with an extra one. Oh, you say so you get an extra one? They give you an extra wow. one. They give you extra hoses, extra lines, extra bars, extra chains, extra... I everything. love how it's got the connector plate, yeah, the faster, European yeah. European I had a tractor that had that on at one time on the loader, and that was bad to the bone, man. man. A lot of A lot of guys here don't like them because you can't find, you, know, you can't find this at your local tractor supply. But if you go ahead and buy an extra one, it has some extra parts, it's uh, so fast. Sticker on the outside, and I just scratched out in it, so I remember it. I went on my lines there, right? There's got a hook, it put the pin in it right there. The only, time, the only thing on it that takes you yeah, just a, a little, a little finessing is getting this pin lined up. That head's a little heavy to try to make. What does that head weigh? I think it's four, if I'm not mistaken, 480. 480. So have you, your capacity is only 1300, you know. Have you put a clevis in there and worked with somebody off the hook or anything or whatever? Like, dude, uh, I've, done, like I've, done, I've done myself and had the remote on me, and I've had a young guy that I've done a little bit, yes. Well, we're going we're gonna to do something. Man, yeah. It's fun, man. I've watched you enough. I trust you to hang yeah. me up there, hey, man. I'm going hey, to be careful, man. That's, oh, I know. My guys, I tell them, I was like, man, you know, and if we're going to work on the weekend, I go home and uh, try to eat good and get good rest because I got to run this over their heads and I want to be safe and make sure right. everybody, everybody's Oh, right okay. there. That order to get it right there. And the That's good thing is if you go a hair that way, you can pull this oh, way. Oh, you, okay, yeah, you good but you then. can't, but you can't, yeah. uh, it don't go the other way much. Now I got to square it up a hair. That's why you go ahead and hook the lines up so you can do this part. Yeah, so he's going to slide that pin in there and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Yeah. There you go. There it goes. So what kind of lock does it have on that nut? I know it's got a lock on it. So you got this, and then you got a, a pin that uh, goes, goes in it. So it's got a just got a guy, yeah. castle nut on it. Yeah. That's all it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. So when you cut that one right there, can that thing lock up and hold it standing up like that, or is it going to try to pivot over then? If it's a lot of weight, it will try to pivot over. But that um, one right there shouldn't oh, yeah, pivot. It'll, it'll no, hold that no, one. Yeah, that just have a little light cherry, because that's probably not no, 400 pounds good. right there. No. So the, you know, the key is just getting that thing squared up with it the best you can. Sure. We're going to tilt her down just a little. Bit. Let's cut it. Pick up on it. Come down a little bit. A little bit. Not bad. take you to kind of get proficient at it i felt like the first few weeks was a little rough you know i feel like i just slow. <laughs> i didn't feel like i was making money like i normal the normal way i get up there rig everything down you know run a lot of zip lines um you know quarter wraps on trees i felt like i was a lot more efficient like that the first few weeks i bet you trimmed everything at your house oh you? yeah oh yeah <laughs> Dude, I, I was just taking on crane jobs for nothing. For nothing. Just want to play, yeah. Yeah. And hey, I had one. I had one family didn't let me do it because they're like, "How long have you had your crane?" I was like, "You know, two weeks." <laughs> and they're like, "No, we don't want to get her out." And I was like, "But I can do it without the crane. You know, more just as efficient as anybody. Like, I'm, I'm good." Well, that's what I asked Lindsay was, that was my question. I said, how long has he had it? Yeah. Because that tells a story oh, right yeah. there. You know, so if you've had it a year and it hadn't come repossessed it, yeah, you know, you've had to get pretty good at it, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 because they, uh, they don't give them away. Now, yeah. they'll let you have one, but they'll come back and get it.
so it don't kick out this way yeah see now he can go up and kind of swing over to the left now Oh yeah, I just kissed it, it was all. On this pick right here, he's taken just a limb or two out of these two trees, and we're about to take the whole tree right there above the roof line. And so uh, I'm watching his grapple as he grabs, because, you know, I can see stuff on the back side of the tree that he can't see from where he's at over there. And once we get set up and I finish my second cut, we'll watch how it goes. Perfect, because you got a lean of a little finger to the side. 
Cotton top be gone. That whole dang tree. <laughs> oh yeah.
maybe at batteries, but I'm on four percent. We haven't even worked with you all day. Had not even met this cat till this morning about 10 30, 11 o'clock or something like yeah. that. Dude, we slayed some stuff well, today. We did a lot man. of jobs today. I'm telling you, we, we worked some trees, man. I enjoyed it. So it's Rooks Tree Service, and yep. give them your number if you want to give it out right here. You're, uh, he's in the Tupelo area. Yeah, Tupelo, Pontotoc, Oxford, um, Corinth. Uh, Fulton kind of area about an hour from Tupelo 662-891-6766 hmm. right and we're going to work together again Wednesday I'm going to come back up here and we're going to do the latest smoke down on some more <laughs> yeah, and, and get it trees. get it going and I'll I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to end up I was watching him on the on the crane today and everything running the outriggers and all that stuff I pay attention to all that stuff I'm like it a I'm like a baby diaper soaking up a turd man yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn to run that thing I'm going to stick you on the saw that's what right. I'm going to do right. man yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got the easy part running this if I, if I can just do a tree over the front i can sit in the air conditioner running <laughs> i ain't even thought about that dude man, yeah Dang, Make it real easy good man i tell you what i have had a flipping blast awesome, today man. it's nice working with somebody who knows what to do man. oh yeah good. i'm gonna tell you you're not near as bad as what Lindsay said you was right, man. man yeah yeah there's always two sides to every store i know <laughs> right i know right well, we'll see you again in the video yes coming sir up, yes man. sir man Heck thank yeah. you yes sir so the people who don't know i hope they that helps you understand how the uh, grapple saw truck works. The tree mech, that's a power finger boom that's on that thing. Very, very interesting tool for uh, for tree work. For this kind of work right here, uh, where we work off the of streets, and if you do mess up the yard, it really doesn't matter a whole lot. You're just trying to get, uh, you know, the debris to the side of the road and, and just leave it sitting right there. The uh, grapple saw truck, that's the first time I've actually worked personally with one i've been around them a few times but that's the first time for me uh, if you've got somebody like rook that can you know run it well and you got a cut guy that can cut you can you can really walk the dog and kick the cat if you will i mean you you can you can flat roll we ended up getting trees off of four different houses in that time period that we were there on monday and I had to go to the doctor first thing, so I was about uh, 10 30 getting up there. And then when, when I got there, um, finishing up the first job or working on finishing up, and then we just blasted off and just rolled through the, the next three right there. And I got back home, I was back home by about 5 30, 5 40, something like that. And it's about 40 mile drive up there to, uh, to where it is. So the thing about it is, is we're uh, racing time. All of us are. There's a bunch of other tree services up there. Everybody that I know is pretty much up there because we got to get these trees off these houses. And, and the reason being is, is because we're racing time because of rain. So the trees are through the roof. Some of them are like tore the roofs completely up. Some of them are just knocked holes in the roof. That's not too bad but you got to get them things tarped and so usually like when you get one done there's a group that comes in right behind you and they tarp it so it keeps it from the inside the house getting wet to sheetrock the insulation and even the contents inside the house so we're trying to get as much done as we possibly can and so a rook in, in the video i had never met him i had met Lindsay, but i had watched enough of Lindsay's videos Lindsay is a uh, smith works the one that had a brand new uh, cat bulldozer I ran the other day in the 306 Escobar. But I watched enough of Lindsay's videos to know what kind of person Rook was or is. And I, I knew that I can, you, like, you you can tell those people that you can, you can mesh with. And that your thought process, even if you don't have the centers on, you can work without the centers. It's like you have this crazy kind of weird connection to where you think the same and you just know. It's just it's just one of those deals. The people who know what understand what I'm talking about, they get it. They, they know. So we're trying to get all that, you know, as much done as we can. There was uh over fifteen hundred houses there in the Amory area with uh damage. Uh, the, com the the electrical infrastructure, the power grid, is going to have to be completely rebuilt in that town. It, it On all those streets, it's gone. I mean, it's just completely gone. And every all of that stuff is going to have to be redone back up and, and fixed. And just clay-rooted giant trees, you're going to see 
in tomorrow's video a tree that is just a, a monster. I mean, we, we worked on that thing. Um, me and Michael Rook worked on that thing. I was running the 592 with a 32 inch bar. I think he had about a 30 inch bar on a steel. And we got to the butt cut. Uh, even me with my 32 inch bar on it, I couldn't make the cut from both sides. It was still hanging on. And I had my 661 with a 36 and, and Rook come across there with his, with his 661 with a 36 and was able to finish that cut. And like I said, you'll see that in tomorrow's video. Just a humongous, gigantic uh, oak tree there. Since I've been posting these videos about the Amory area, uh, I've gotten several comments from different people. And this comment saddens me pretty bad when people say this. And, and what, what the people are doing, and they probably don't realize, they may not even realize what they're doing, but I'm going to give my opinion on what they're doing here in just a second. And their comment goes like, that's nothing compared to Rolling Fork, Mississippi down there. Or that devastation is not near what Rolling Fork is down there. Uh, they're comparing, and this is not a game, people. This is not who got the worst damage. It's not about that. And I don't understand why folks do that. It's petty. It's insensitive. It's completely stupid, if you ask me. And it shows your level of thought process. What I would love for some of the people is probably a dozen or so, or maybe more than that, in those in the videos that I posted, it says, it says something like that. I would love for them to walk up to somebody that's got their roof tore off up there at Amory, and then walk up and they stand there in front of that husband and wife or that homeowner of that property and tell them, hey, your stuff ain't tore up near as bad as Roaring Fork is down there. Ain't nobody mentioned Winona, Mississippi yet. Uh, so eight days of hope will be in Amory and God's pit crew, which is Chris Childs and that group, they're in Winona. They got there today, which is uh, Tuesday. They got there today. I know all those guys, man. I've trained a bunch of them, you know? And so we all got to work together. So the biggest thing, instead of trying to say, well, being a one-upper, that this is worse than the other, the support. The support can be either in volunteering in your time or whatever, uh, money, sending money to Red Cross, different entities like that, you know, whatever. Or even if you're on the other side of the world, there's a way to support things. You can support through prayer. You can pray for those people like me, Michael, you know, Rook, all the tree guys that are there doing this work. Because, dude, this stuff's so dangerous. It's, it's insane. We make this stuff look easy. But it's because we make it look easy because it's all we've ever done our whole life. I mean, we've run saws, cut stuff, and understanding the cuts and, and what you're dealing with and, and things like that. But think before you comment, a comment like that. You know what I mean? But I appreciate the thought and all the comments that have come through on the previous videos. Uh, really, really appreciate that and all the views. And we're going to get up there. We're going to start first thing in the morning. And me and old Rook, we're going to give her heck, son. We're going to give her heck. I cannot tell you how much joy it is to work with somebody like Rook. I love it. Freaking love it, man. And just good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that. Appreciate all y'all. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.